More than 20 protesters have been killed in Kenya following President William Ruto's crackdown on demonstrations against a so-called finance bill in the country. The killings come less than one month after President William Ruto was welcomed at the White House and even met with former President Barack Obama, later tear-gassing his sister. On the guest list at the black tie event at the White House was President Joe Biden, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, former Presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, Al Sharpton, Ilhan Omar, actor LeVar Burton, and the country music singer Brad Paisley. Obama reportedly stayed only for a short time, but also managed to hold a private meeting with Ruto. During the trip, President Biden announced his intent to designate Kenya a, quote, major non-NATO ally, a designation which was formalized just a few weeks later as President Ruto cracked down on protesters in his country. The protests were over a finance bill supported by the International Monetary Fund, which advised the government to push the bill despite the expected protests against it. The bill initially proposed to introduce a 16% sales tax on bread and 25% tax on cooking oil. Environmental provisions would have increased the cost of feminine hygiene products and diapers. Young Kenyans, unaffiliated with existing political parties, flooded the streets. One protester went viral after he appeared to smoke a tear gas canister. The protesters were supported by none other than President Barack Obama's sister, who CNN interviewed after she was tear gassed by police. I can't believe that these young people are just trying to demonstrate for their rights. I came to join them as a genoise to tell them that we understand that they need to use their voices and we're being tear gassed. We're being tear gassed. We have flags and banners. Nothing else. Nothing else. These young people have nothing else. Just bags, flags and banners. The Kenyan flag. How can you tear gas your own people? Listen to them. Listen to these children. They're the future. They're 80% of our population. These young people need a future. They have no jobs. Over 50% of our population who are under 35 have no jobs. We cannot ta start taxing them when they have no jobs. We're taxing the jobless and we're telling them to take a loan. And then when they start working, they're indebted. It is not right. It, that is why I'm here. I'm here to tell them I support them. Kenya's National Commission on Human Rights has stated that 24 people have been confirmed dead after the police cracked down on protests. However, the facts are still coming out about an incident in the area of Githarai. Locals have claimed a massacre took place, while videos show police descending on the area while firing bullets. President Ruto has accused the commission of fabricating the data. We don't know yet what happened in Githarai and whether there was a massacre or not. But what we do know is that the police response to protests against US-backed austerity measures has killed nearly two dozen people. And it's not the first time President Ruto has been accused of a massacre. Back in 2007, Ruto was accused of orchestrating violence that killed 1,300 people and displaced 600,000. Women and children were, quote, burned alive, hacked to death, or chased from their homes. Ruto was even charged with three counts of crimes against humanity by the International Criminal Court, but he got off with a mistrial due to, quote, witness tampering and intolerable political meddling. Due to the backlash, President Ruto has dropped the IMF-backed finance bill. But this June in Kenya, the price of having a U.S. puppet as your president was 23 lives. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.